All right, good morning, Calc BC students. Uh, we're gonna have two different videos for today's stuff um, because we're doing lines and planes in three-dimensional space. And uh, I think uh, I'll do one video first on lines. Hopefully I can keep it under 15 minutes, uh, my, my time limit on YouTube. And then we'll jump over and do planes in space. Um, and uh, that will hopefully be 15 minutes as well. Otherwise I might have to chop that one, depending on how far we can get. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about lines and planes in space, I wanna start with a, a two dimensional example. Um, and then we'll switch to a three dimensional example for a line in three space. And um, what I'm gonna do uh, is basically just, uh, if you were thinking about uh, a line in space, um, in two space, uh, imagine you know, you've got your, your x and y axis here, um, just regular axis. And if I said, okay, so here's, my, here's what I'm gonna do, rather than my normal uh, way I would describe a line, which is, um, you know, we would give you, you know, uh, y equals mx plus b, um, which is great. Um, but I'm gonna talk, you know, the, this, this slope number and this b kind of work similarly in three-dimensional space. Only the b for us is, of course, the y-intercept. It's given that the x-coordinate uh, of this point is zero, but I don't have to start there. And that's really what three-space lines are gonna be more like. Um, and so, you know, if I just said, oh, look, um, I'm going to start at the point one, two. Um, this, uh, this slope is actually telling you the change in y, right, over the change in x. And so there's a very analogous thing that's going to happen in three space. Um, what I would say is, what if I did this? If I said, hey, look, the y coordinate is going to be um, some value let's just call it k, um, times a parameter plus the initial point. And the x coordinate is gonna be some other parameter. Um, I'll call it, uh, let's say p times a parameter value plus its initial point. So um, imagine, you know, saying, oh, well, my, my next point on the line is going to be, you know, the P is gonna be three and the K is gonna be four. Well, then I would know that I would go, you know, three times my parameter would basically give me three. And then for the vertical change, four times my parameter. And that's the next point on my line. Oops, getting off my trackpad there, sorry. And you can see that with just those two points, I could determine the line and that'd be great. Uh, and we know this corresponds to a slope of four thirds, which is what would have been in the y equals mx plus b equation. Uh, so in two space, um, I wanna think of it like a set of parameterized equations um, for x and y. Well, if we're gonna expand that to three dimensions, then you can imagine what happens is we simply have um, a third dimension. We add, you know, our x-axis, our y-axis, just like before, but now we add to it the z-axis. And we're gonna do a similar kind of thing. We're gonna say, look, um, you know, I want to describe this line in three-dimensional space. I'm gonna do so parametrically um, at first. And so I'm gonna say, look, my, my x-coordinate is my initial x-coordinate, wherever that point is in three space, plus some constant, uh, you'll see the book uses A for X, uh, B for Y and C for Z. So I'm gonna follow their notation there. My new Y coordinate defined parametrically, Y1 plus B times T. So in the old two dimensional space, our slope of our line would really be B over A because that's changing Y, that's changing X. But we're adding on the third variable And so this set of parametric equations uh, defines uh, our line. And, and what I want you to notice is um, if you were given the point x1, y1, and z1, somewhere out here in, in three-dimensional space, let's say it's over here, 
um, then this ABC um, is kind of a direction that you're going to travel. You're going to go A in the X direction, B in the Y direction, and C in the Z direction. And you're probably noticing I wrote those um, as vector components. Because really, what we're talking about is starting at this point using a direction vector, we can find our way to the next point in, in three dimensional space. And so, um, a lot of times uh, when we see a linear equation uh, in three space, it's given as a vector, a vector quantity. You have your initial starting point, and then you have your direction vector that tells you where to go in the, for the next uh, point in the plane. Um, the, uh, there is an alternate uh, representation. Um, your book ca calls them uh, symmetric equations. And um, basically, it's just removing the parameter from the parameterized one. Um, so let me, uh, let me show you that if I can. Uh, where's... Oh, okay, hold on. I have to switch over to the, uh, to the document camera here. Um, and so, uh, and uh, you can see the symmetric equations are simply just remove the parameter from the uh, parametric equations for the line in space. And, uh, they're all equal to each other because it's all the same parameter t. And so you can uh, solve them uh, into their symmetric or move them out of the symmetric equations. Um, the nice thing about the symmetric equations, you can see the denominator gives you the vector a, a i, b, uh, j, and c, k uh, as well. So there's a nice connection here between um, vectors and parametrics that uh, previously uh, maybe we didn't always see. So um, that's our, that's our uh, simple uh, example here for uh, lines in three-dimensional space. Uh, hopefully this video is not so long that it overruns our time limit. And uh, there we go. And uh, so we'll have, um, we'll have a video next up is going to be on uh, planes in three space and you'll see how the lines uh, in three space help us determine the equation of the plane in three space um, and uh, we're going to be employing our uh, recent work in cross product as well and uh, you'll see more about that in the next video so